Blaze Blue Central Fiction is an interesting game. It's the most recent game in the Blaze Blue franchise. Well, I mean, it's the most recent fighting game in the franchise, but you wouldn't think that if you played the game. It hasn't been updated since June of last year and has been slowly losing players since December, but surprisingly, it isn't dead. There are a bunch of Discord groups for the game, the subreddit is active, and it still gets featured in tournaments. I mean, shit, just look at Frosty Fawnings three weeks ago where Central Fiction was one of the games being hosted. Okay, well that's cool and all, but that doesn't answer the question at hand. Is this game still worth playing in 2024? Well, that's a good question and one that I don't have an immediate answer to, so just watch the rest of the video and find out. Rebel 1 Action. Blaze Blue Central Fiction was released in arcades in 2015, but got a Steam port in spring of 2017. It was developed by Arc System Works, who you might know from publishing games like the recent Undernight 2 and developing games like Strive and the Guilty Gear franchise. Fun fact, Blaze Blue as a franchise was originally created because Arc System Works lost the rights to Guilty Gear, so Blaze Blue was created as a spiritual successor. As of this, Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear share a lot of similarities, whether it be characters in the game or system mechanics. But none of this matters, let's talk about Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Like I said before, Central Fiction is an interesting game. Obviously, the original Blaze Blue shares lots of similarities with Guilty Gear, but I feel like Central Fiction doesn't, or at the very least it shares less similarities than the original Blaze Blue does. Central Fiction has a bunch of unique game mechanics that helps differentiate it from other anime fighters and also just makes the game more enjoyable. But I feel like Central Fiction does a bad job at explaining these systems to you. Like for example, distortion drives, overdrives, and break bursts. What the fuck are those? In reality, these moves are not that complicated to understand. Distortion drives are essentially just supers and they use 50% of your heat gauge, which you fill up by taking damage and dealing damage. Overdrives are just power-ups that make all your attacks stronger, especially your distortion drive, and break bursts are literally just bursts from Guilty Gear. Okay, maybe this game does share some similarities with the Guilty Gear franchise. You use it to escape combos and shit, and using it drains your overdrive circle. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, Jugo, what are you yapping about? This is very simple and easy to understand. I mean, yeah, it is, because I explained it to you. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that the central fiction tutorials are especially bad, but they're not good. And the main problem with the tutorials are these paragraphs, bro. Like what the fuck is this, man? I understand that they're just trying to explain stuff in full, but there has to be a better way to explain this shit. It's just information overload. Like I'm sorry, but let's be for fucking real. Do you really expect me to read 5 slides and to remember all of that? Like really? And to be honest, I feel like this isn't a central fiction problem, I think it's just more of a fighting game problem. But at the same time, there are still fighting games that like have way better tutorial systems, so... Yeah, you gotta take accountability for this one, Blaze Blue. A nigga like me, I'm a fighting game veteran, so it's easy for me to pick up new games and understand the systems, but I feel like central fiction would be very hard for someone who's new to fighting games to learn. But that's enough complaining. While I do think that tutorials could be better, the tutorials in the game do something that I like. Character specific tutorials, tutorials that teach you about a character and how to use them. This is something more fighting games need and I really appreciate it. Let's take Strive for example, the fighting game I probably play the most right now. It, it, like you don't understand how frustrating it is to try learn a new character and I have to sit there and watch a, a 30 minute YouTube video explaining his pokes, their, their fastest, their 5 peat, how to like bro let me just, let me play the tutorial man. I'd rather the fucking Blaze Blue Central Fiction paragraphs over this shit, bro. Just, just give me tutorials, character. Please, Strive. Please. Please. Please, I'm trying to learn Zato. Please, give me tutorials. Speaking of characters, let's, let's talk about the characters. Okay, so one of the first things that you'll notice is that this game has a massive roster. There are 36 characters in this game, and they are all good. Well, well, I don't know about good, but they're all unique and viable, and I feel like that's a sign of a brilliant fighting game. All the characters in this game work differently. Like, obviously some characters have similar playstyles, like yeah, there's more than one Rushdown character in the game, but the way they play is different, and the way you go about rushing people down is different. Of course, every character has their basic A, B, C, and D attacks, and they all got their own overdrives and shit, but some characters have unique mechanics. Like this character, Sabaki. Instead of having a D attack like the other characters in the game, holding the D button just charges up her install gauge. And once you've filled up the gauge enough, you can use it to use more powerful versions of her special moves. Now, not every character in the game has mechanics as unique and complex as that, but they all come pretty close in my opinion. Now, let's talk about game modes, because Central Fiction has a lot of them. First, let's start with the story mode. And uh, yeah, I don't really got a lot to say about it. Me personally, I've never been the type of person that cares about fighting game story modes, especially in games like Strive and Central Fiction where it's literally just like story. It's like an animations and shit and you don't interact with it. Like if I'm being brutally honest, it, it kind of looks like shit. Like it doesn't look horrible, but it just looks cheap, which is weird since it's fully voice acted. It reminds me of like a shitty anime visual novel, like the type of games you can get for two year on Steam. It, it reminds me of fucking hentai ads to be honest. Look. The story is cool, but it's just not for me. If you're the type of person that enjoys this type of stuff, then maybe you enjoy it. 
but this shit just isn't for me, bro. But something story related that I do like is this game's library. Now I'ma be honest, it's not as good as the one in Strive with the timeline and all that shit, but it's still pretty good. The library in this game is basically just a blaze blue encyclopedia. Locations, organizations, weapons, people, it has everything you could ask for. Personally, I'm not a fan of story modes and shit like that, but I love lore. That's why I love games like Dark Souls and Destiny. I like learning about a game's world on my own, and the library is a, is a great way of letting you do that. Apart from the story related stuff, Central Fiction has a lot of single player game modes, and to be honest, I feel like they deserve a round of applause for this. You know, sometimes playing online and fighting games can get bad. Like, like, the ranked lose streaks can get really bad. So every once in a while, it's nice to have some single player content you can do when you don't want to fight other people. Alright, so first of all, you got the arcade mode, and this game's arcade mode is very cinematic. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just cool. It feels like there was a lot of thought put into creating it, and it just makes the experience a lot more enjoyable. Like most other fighting games, the arcade mode just revolves around you picking a character and then fighting people while also getting some dialogue and story thrown in there. But like, once again, Central Fiction just makes it look cooler. Like, it has this screen showing you who you fought and has different acts. It's just cool as fuck. I approve. Good job, Blaze Blue Central Fiction developers. This shit is cool as fuck. It's too bad that the story mode is ass. Next up is this game mode called Grim of Abyss, and it's also cool as fuck. L like, no joke, it's really cool. It kind of turns the game into, like, a roguelike or RPG. Okay, I don't know exactly what it turns it into, but, but it's cool. So Grim of Abyss is kind of like this game's survival mode, but it added some spice to it. It has grimoires you can collect to get skills and items and to enhance your stats and shit, and once you die you can start from certain points. It it's all just cool as hell. I don't want to waste too much time going too in depth into this game mode, but just know that it's really interesting and it's really fun. Lastly, there's score attack mode and speed star mode. In score attack mode, you just fight niggas back to back and try to get the highest score, and in speed star mode, you just beat niggas back to back and try to get the fastest time. These two modes aren't as complex as Grim Abyss, you know, to be honest, they're pretty simple in nature, but they're still fun. And they also both have that extra, like, spice, that, like, cinematicism that makes it cooler. Is that a real word? Oh yeah, there's also versus mode. Yeah. Here's a moment you've all been waiting for. The reason you clicked on this video. The most important part of this fucking video. The PvP. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. As in, like, the, the online is fine, I guess. I mean, it's good. Like, it works. There's, like, lobbies and shit. And, like, ranked and stuff. It, it's good. And it has rollback netcode, which is also good. But there is one small problem. So, Blaze Blue Central Fiction isn't a particularly popular game, which means that the player base isn't that big. I mean, just look at the Steam charts. I'd say it averages in and around 200 players at any given moment. Now this on its own isn't bad, like to be honest it doesn't take that long to find matches but sometimes you just get unlucky and you have to wait a bit, but it, it's fine. The low player base on its own isn't bad, but what's bad is the fact that all the people that play this game know the game inside out. A new player to this game will basically never fight someone who is also a new player, or even the same level as them. This game is very top heavy if that makes sense. It's hard for a new player to join the game and be good at it or even have fun playing it because as soon as they go online they'll just get violated by people who have put hundreds of hours into the game. But this isn't really a problem that can be fixed. I mean it's something you can see in lots of older games that are like competitive. It, it, it just happens, so uh, keep it in mind. The last two things I want to talk about is this game's music and the way it looks. Nigga, this game's music is phenomenal. Like, this game's music is actually fantastic. Like, like honestly, it's really good. I know the video isn't over and, like, the question of is Central Fiction still worth playing hasn't been answered, but if there's one thing you should take away from this video, it should be the greatness, the the blissful beauty of this game soundtrack. Like, just go listen to it. And the graphics, or I guess just the way the game looks, is also fantastic. In my opinion, this is the peak of pixel art in fighting games. It looks really good. Me personally, I still prefer the 3D art style that games like Tekken and Street Fighter have, but that doesn't take away from how good the sprites in this game look. Also, the stages, they also look fantastic. Like, the intros before battles kind of show off what the background looks like, and it looks really nice. It has this cool, like, 3D look to it that reminds me of, like, early PS2 and Xbox games, like the early 3D Final Fantasy games, and it's just very aesthetically pleasing. And the game also does a very good job at blending in the background, like the 3D background, with the sprites and shit. The game just looks fantastic, and the whole cyberpunk aesthetic the menu and shit has is also cool as fuck. But that's enough glazing. This all leads back to the question, is Blaze Blue Central Fiction still worth playing? Okay, so I want to say yes, but honestly, no, I don't think it is. Now hear me out. I know that probably just pissed off a bunch of people, but, but just let me cook for a second. In 2024, there is a plethora of brilliant fighting games you can play. Strive, Tekken 8, Street Fighter 5, Under Night 2. In my opinion, there's too many good fighting games out there for you to play in 2024 for you to buy and put time into this game. 
If somebody asked me if they should play Central Fiction, I'd tell them to just play Strive or something. And here's the thing, I like Central Fiction. Central Fiction is a really cool, fun, and well-balanced game, but so are all of the other games I just named. The only thing I really think Central Fiction has going for it that like stands out from the crowd is its fantastic single player content. If you're a fan of single player stuff and fighting games, then buy it and play it. But if not, then don't. I really just don't think it's worth putting the time and hours to play what is like essentially a, a pretty dead game if we're being brutally honest. Especially when you consider how good the alternatives are that also have like vibrant and active player bases. But at the end of the day, that's just my opinion. Central Fiction is a cheap game and even though it is hard for newcomers, there are Discord servers that are very accommodating for noobs. Me personally, I really don't think that I'm going to play this game again anytime soon, but hey, if you want to play it, then you do you. Like here's what I want you guys to understand, it's not that I wouldn't recommend playing this game, it's just that I would recommend playing other games, if that makes sense. So in short, is Blaze Blue Central Fiction worth playing in 2024? Not really, no, the answer is no. And that's the end of the video. I don't really know what type of fan base this game has, but I really hope this video doesn't piss them off. Blaze Blue Central Fiction is cool, but but it's just not me, bruh. And if you, that's cool. If it's you, that if that's you, if that's you, bruh, then that's you, cause cool for you, bruh. But it's just not looking like my type of game, bruh. Like like run it back. It's like it's not that this game is bad. It's great. But in 2024, there are so many much like greater fighting games. If that makes sense. Like, I'm never going to walk in a room and see Tekken 8 with, with looking thick as fuck, bad as shit, sexy as fuck, and be like, nah, I'd rather, I'd rather blaze blue in the corner fucking playing with his dick or whatever. Like, nah, I'm good. I'll take Strive, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'll take DNF Duel, bro. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm just dick eating, though. But, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Anyway, like and subscribe, bro. Fighting game arc still going strong, even though that last soul bad guy video flopped. Anyway, it is what it is. As always, this has been your boy, Hugo Young, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.